commence à dire la présentation de Aline Donc, on va présenter maintenant. Je vais présenter maintenant elle. Allô? Tu m'as Tu m'entends? Ah. Oui, il y a quelques semaines. Ok. Alors, je vais aller le coin et à présenter maintenant oui. euh, l'intégration de l'écran. D'accord, ok. nécessaire pour permettre l'écran euh, euh, pour permettre de c'est bizarre hein. ça veut dire l'intégralité l'intégralité de votre écran hein, l'intégr... hein, hein? Mmh. l'intégrale de votre écran de ça vous devez accorder les autorisations nécessaires pour permettre etc c'est mmh. la même chose donc il fallait d'abord qu'un chihaja mais en tout cas tu m'as l'autorisation
1987 to conduct uh, research and university teaching in Germany. He works uh, as lead of the research group Helmut Zentrum Berlin from material and energy, research director of solar energy group at uh, Qatar Environmental and Energy Research Institute, and joint professor at Hamad bin Khalifa University. His research uh, interests are primarily focused on alternative materials to emerging thin film solar energy from uh, planar films to nanostructures, photoelectrochemistry chemistry, and uh, water splitting, nanosynthesis, inject printing of functional materials and solar cells. Professor uh, Ahmad Inaw is also president of uh, the Scientific Council of uh, Erizan, Morocco. I uh, pleasure and uh, honor to moderate this uh, session. I give the floor uh, to you, Professor Inaw, uh, to present your lecture. Then we open the discussion uh, and questions uh, with the, the professors and the PhD students. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the presentation. And thank, thank to the uh, organizers, especially the Hamouti and his friend with whom I work the whole week to make things running. I'm very happy to be in this conference, which is a very important conference because it is, it's touching fundamental aspect of yeah. materials and research and also the application. I will talk about one subject, which is inject printing processing. This was my last project in Germany when I was working before I, 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 I get retired, which is the nanofabrication to roll to roll manufacturing. And this topic is still now a big topic in the Institute. So I have uh, left a very good fingerprint in the Institute in Germany. What, I, what I'm going to do is at the end of the day, I want everybody and hopefully to understand what is material strategy for sustainable development. So it's not important the details. What is important is the idea and to have in mind in which direction the research should go. So uh, my, my plan, you have already seen it here, uh, the quantum solar energy conversion. I will talk about photovoltaic portfolio and material solar energy solution. I want to talk to, to about power to gas, to hydrogen especially. I want to connect the, the Mendeleev table with the, with, the, with the materials. And I want to give some result on what I have done before on inject uh, formulation and the uh, drop on demand inject printing. And of course, on the material they have developed before, CIGS and copper zinc tensor pipe. I will also talk about perovskite and they will let uh, a message at the end for people to think about it. But what we are talking about globally is the to let 100% energy transition so <clears throat> to, to start to stop using uh, the uh, fuel which is polluting the the environment and to go to the uh, to the uh, solar energy and actually the so the world energy consumption exceed 18 terawatt per year on the in the in the left side on the down you have seen a terawatt is uh, about one, two, three, four, twelve zero watt. Huh? And uh, by 2050, the demand will go more further, more than 30 terawatt average. So this means if we don't pay attention and if we don't make this energy transition, we will have problems in terms of environment. So 
When you see, if you see this diagram here, we, I wrote some word in Arabic, you see that 80% of the energy is coming from fossil fuel, which, which is a, a, a polluting the environment. And we expect to move away from fuel, fossil fuel. That's the energy transition. So the, the question is, can we go, can we move very fast to the 100% energy transition or not? Anyway, in Morocco, the, the roadmap is 52% energy transition by 2030. And the Majesty King Mohammed says, he said many times, also in Marrakesh, in the in the uh, in the in the big conference, which was two years ago. For that, we need we have to require a technology innovation, and innovation require multidisciplinary portfolio approach. And here, multidisciplinary portfolio approach is our job as a scientist. So. Let's see something very important for student and also for, uh, for uh, all the researchers. We have the sun, which give us every day a, a thousand watt per square meter of energy. And we have to take profit of this energy. You know that uh, the quantum mechanics or the quantum physics tell us uh, supported by experiment, of course, that the, this energy come to us as a quantum of energy, tank to, to Planck, to Einstein, etc. They, they have worked since many, uh, since the last century about this problem. We can use this formula, what you see here, which is very simple, the Planck, the Planck constant, the uh, speed of, of light and the wavelength of the of the of the light you can already deduce which wavelength will excite a material and i wrote the, the formula here uh, I, I the lambda here is in nanometer please the 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 nature is doing this is working with this so the nature is able to produce oxygen and also uh, to produce carbon oxide. The nutrient can, can produce food like glucose, for example. And all what the nature need is light and water. So what about us? Can we imitate the nature or not? What we call artificial photosynthesis. We learn from the nature. So we can see here the fundamental four point here, what we have to, to translate into technology. The light absorption, the charge separation, the charge transport, and the use of this charge transport to make electricity or to make fuel or to fix carbon oxide carbon dioxide, or from water to produce hydrogen and oxygen. And that's the point what research now focus on. Okay, you can see here a lot of, uh, as a chemist, you can see here a lot of uh, equation here, which are ter thermodynamically possible, kinetically, very difficult, but thermodynamically possible. So if you just make calculation, you can see that carbon dioxide can uh, take some uh, proton from water, for example, to produce carbon oxide. You can see that carbon dioxide can take proton to produce fuel like uh, ethanol. You can see uh, carbon oxide, dioxide can take some uh, proton to make CH4, etc. And what you make here in red, and in between there is 1.2 volt difference, is the splitting of water. We can just with 1.2 volts split water into hydrogen and oxygen. And the free energy necessary is written here. 
in terms of volt. It's 1.23 volts. The question is, if you don't resolve the kinetics problem, you cannot do it with this 1.23 volt. And that's what we have to find out with, with new materials. You can see here the electrocatalysis. You can take two electrodes, one anode and one cathode, and you can split water. And here also you need to resolve the problem of kinetic. Res resolving the problem of kinetic means you have to find new materials. Of course, we have to control the material at the atomic level. And there are quantum mechanics and the first principle, the, the Schrodinger equation, and there are calculations. And we have to find out how to take the whole spectrum. You have infrared 52%, we have visible 45%, and UV 3%. And if you take only small band gap, you can take all, you can have only small voltage. So you cannot get this 1.23 uh, volt. If you take high band gap, you can have high voltage, but you have only few current because you can absorb only the 3% of ultraviolet. So we have to find a compromise to get what I put here down, the, uh, the, the, uh, the energy. This energy has to be as much as possible. We are limited by the theory. If you look here, this uh, Shockley Kaiser limit. We are we the the best the best uh, band gap is here between two one and two electron volt. So there are many possibilities to make tandem solar cell with, by combining different band gap. But anyway, the principle is to find a material with acceptor and donor very well. Uh, situated in the energy band diagram to make this. And the power is the voltage multiplied by the current. So now let's look to the problem globally, what the uh, politics can understand. We have a photovoltaic portfolio. The photovoltaic for tomorrow means design and discover new energy materials. Mean efficiency in what per kilogram with a roadmap thinner to have a flexible and cheaper to have less dollar per square meter. The roadmap mean faster. When you are manufacturing how much module per minute you can you can produce. The roadmap means stab stability this means your module will stay more than 25 years. And of course, we have for that, we have to make the fabrication, the characterization, the analysis, the performance, and the reliability in harsh environment, mean in uh, desert climate, like in Morocco, for example. The first application is in the building. How to design and manufacture module as a building component. That's the one. The second is engineering, so the PV reliability, the storage and mobility, how to improve PV storage and mobility technology to match the energy transition. And the third in portfolio is how to minimize, to optimize the power electronic for the network connection. So, Let's go now to the to the university in the research. If you look here, you have the Mendeleev table. I put here only the material which are very important for the research. There are many other material for like uh, radioactive material. I don't put it here in this Mendeleev table. And you see here the transition metal are very important. And here, and you see here a lot of material which is very important also. And you see how you can put material together to have uh, energy configuration with uh, 
low configuration, what we call OMU, and the high configuration, what I call LUMU. That is all these are very important for student, graduate student, and scientists to know. And one important problem, what I, I told, I worked on, and you can see here the reference, which is my habilitation in Germany in 1986, where I have studied the transition metal calcogenide, what we call here MX2. M is the transition metal, which you see here in blue, and X is the, the calcogenide like sulfur, selenium, even oxygen, also to make oxide, etc. And of course, you have to see which material are available. Some material are not available, like platinum, for example. So in this table here, it's very important. That's why I call this material solution beyond periodic table. When you see the, ta the material table, you have also to look which material is stable, which combination of material are stable, which material is available on the, on the planet in order to have it cheaper and to go to terawatt strategy for energy transition. And there is a very important issue is the chemical stability. I show here an, a, a diagram where you see, for example, the D-metal like ruthenium to prepare, for example, ruthenium oxide or ruthenium sulfide. And the, you, the, the, the particularity of this ruthenium oxide or some transition metal calcogenide is that the, the D-band, what we call T de G and E G are both in conduction band and valence band. And therefore, the electron, when you move one electron from the valence band to the conduction band, the electron, he don't feel that he is gone. It's still either in the, in the valence band, and even if it's in the conduction band, is in the ergy. This means the stability of your material is not compromised. And this is very important to point out here that the material are very good for chemical and electrochemical stability. Now we go further for the, we need materials for storage. And you can see here in this Mendeleev table, I add a lot of, uh, of features. Where is the strong reduction agent, the ionizing, uh, ionizing ionization energy, uh, atomic ra radio, electron affinity. The scientist has to see all these issues. Where is the weaker reduction agent? the stronger reduction agent in order to prepare new material without uh, forgetting that it's very important to see the cost. The economic in dollar per square meter is the material cost plus production cost plus uh, the, divided by the, the power what you can get. And this is very important. So you see the power is in the, it, it is down. This means if you have more power, you can decrease the cost. Then you have to play with the quantum confinement. Everybody know what is the confinement now because the coronavirus, but here I'm talking about the quantum confinement. This means you take a particle and you confine the very small module uh, uh, volume, and then you can, uh, you can get uh, band gap engineering. When you, if you have a small particle, your band gap is higher. If you go to the infrared, your band gap is, is lower. So this nanosynthesis and nanotechnology is very important. So the size dependent property of nanoconstructs. The, co the coordination link in, in the bottom also. Of course, we, we go to the, to the uh, technology. There are two technologies, lithium ion battery and the technology of hydrogen. And this is very important also to prepare material for this and the storage also if you, we talk about hydrogen. Now, the power to X vision, you can see here that the, the, the electrolysis of water to produce hydrogen, to go to produce methane by fixing CO2, and you can use it in industry use, in mobility, in electricity generation and heat. So uh, I will go here to this power to X. If you produce hydrogen using electrolysis, 
photoelectrolysis using PV. You can use this hydrogen either in the methanation. I think yesterday the uh, but can he talk about the uh, the projects in Morocco in the roadmap in Morocco. So the Haber Bosch process use nitrogen from the air and hydrogen, for example, for the green hydrogen from from uh, the electro photoelectrolysis, and you can produce uh, ammoniac. The other is the fixation of CO2 from the atmosphere. You can fix the CO2, which you, you can get from the industry, for example, and with hydrogen, you can make methane. So that's the, 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 what we call here power to X, if somebody don't know what it is. Now, as a scientist working on fundamental problems, we have to prepare to know how to prepare N-type materials, how to prepare P-type materials, how to prepare membrane, where you can integrate it into uh, electrolyzers, and both N-type and P-type material and membrane are the element to make the splitting of water. There are a lot of, uh, of uh, issues to know. What I show you here is uh, the, all this reaction, what I show you before in the beginning, are, you can situate it in the electrochemical scale here. And you can know which reaction can occur in which uh, in potential. And also you can prepare different kinds of material, titanium oxide, tungsten oxide, etc. All these materials are, are a good candidate for water splitting. And unfortunately, you see all these reactions, all these chemicals are close to each other, which make the challenge much, much bigger. And the research is very complicated here. Of course, there are some, some uh, uh, way to see which material, which catal catalytic material can allow you to make one reaction but not the other, etc., to avoid the interference of, of the uh, reaction. Okay. Uh, another uh, thing in the research which is very important to, to keep in mind, that's the proton exchange membrane. There is a, a technology where you can make the water splitting using proton ex exchange membrane. It's also another uh, topic which is very important. And here, the research is how to find the good catalyst. We have iridium, ruthenium, platinum, oxide. For the anode and for the cathode, we have platinum, black platinum, and uh, a mixture of platinum and carbon. And we need new materials for catalysis. All these materials that they show here are rather expensive or difficult to prepare, and we need to do more research. Of course, this kind of picture, what I show you here, you can make it in the lab as a prototype to study your, your process. It's very easy if you have just to have a, a workshop in the, in the university to make this kind of stuff. We, ha we have it when I worked in the Helmut Center, we have a shop where you can make a small, small, uh, proton exchange membrane device and to, and, to, and to work on it. So let's go now to, to the uh, topic what I work very much and is very important to point out. Silicon is the material what you know is a very well studied because the, the, uh, the electronic, the nano electronic, the VLSE technology and from silicon, you can go to two ways. One is the two six compound, and the other one is the three five compound. And there are two kinds of researchers here. Those that work on three six compound are more innovative and try to find out to resolve some very complicated problem. Those that work on three five compound are rather sophisticated and they try to use very expensive equipment to make this material like uh, epitaxy etc when you go from the two six compound or three five compound you can go to ternary compound 
And here, also the research on two sex compounds will move you to low cost material like calcopyrite, copper andium gallium selenide. However, if you work on gallium arsenide, for example, it's, which are very expensive, you can, uh, you can move to infrared detector. And this kind of research on 3,5 compound was developed rather uh, during the, 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 the Cold War uh, in the, in the uh, military sector because you can prepare a very good infrared detectors. So the military, they have a lot of money and the, research, the, the university, there is less money. So uh, there are these two kinds of, of research. Of course, now these kind of research is also used in, in, in solar energy. Uh, here, I want you to see the following. I want you to see the multi-junction, which is combining different material with different band gap. And this is uh, the success now with the multi-junction is rather on three fire compounds. And they think Thomas uh, Hanabel will give a talk on this topic of multi-junction and uh, the, the, the water splitting, I think in 24 and 25, at the end of this uh, conference, and I'm not going to talk very much about it. But I was working very much on, on calcopyrite, and we, these materials, they have a cation of the zinc blend, which can be substituted by the, by, by uh, so you can see here, the two elements of the Mendeleev table can be substituted by, by, by two, three, to get copper and gallium selenide. And this follow always, uh, a law which or, or a rule called green sommerfeld rule so your your atom will always see four charges but the you you loss in the symmetry however if you go from silicon to three five compound or two four five two compound the symmetry stay higher and the doping for three five compound or two four uh, five two compound, the doping is very easy. You can just make a substitution. However, in the in the other kind for cadmium telluride, zinc sulfide, zinc selenide, and copper and gallium selenide is a compensation problem. That's why it's extremely difficult. Of course, the the, the uh, when we move from silicon to the uh, uh, to the binary and ternary compound, we move from back material to 10 films and you see you for silicon for a solar cell you need at least 200 to 300 micrometer to make a solar cell however for 10 film you need only one micrometer maybe until six micrometer so you see how much material and you, you will gain and, and therefore you will gain in the cost there are many publications i put here where i i i also myself i work on it and you can see it so one thing now what I want you to know is the following. In, in research, you start from the university research and you can see here this diagram of time scale where you can study the, uh, the uh, electron, the ion, the grain, the film and the device. And you have different methods, theoretical method, ab initio, density function theory, molecular dynamic, Monte Carlo, finite element cont continuum in a, in a scale of time here, from femme to second to the year. And machine learning is a very important issue now, actually, everybody is trying to combine the background in, in theory to machine learning in order that the, the machine can learn, and by the way, can select which material is better, etc. And it's very important to see all this uh, way of doing things. We start from evaluating material through simulation and modeling. Then that's the knowledge development. Then you go to narrow, to narrow down the choose. Of your of your material based on processing, which which method you use and and economic, 
للمواد المناسبة للتحويل والتخزين الكهربائي. Then you have to identify suitable material for photovoltaic and storage. There are material you can use for photovoltaic, other material you can use for storage, other material you can use for other purposes, etc. Then the research and development. When you start application, you have to identify the failure mechanism. It's very important. What is what is wrong? What is not working very good? هندسة وثيقة وتشخيص قدرة الأجهزة عن العمل تحت ظروف محددة. For example, if you are in Morocco, we have a desert environment, harsh environment, and we have to have a stable material. And that's where when you do the difference between to do fundamental and to do research and development for application. Then you go to proof of concept, مرحلة إثبات الفكرة بهدف معاينة إمكانية التطبيق. And that's what we are doing in, 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 uh, in IRISM. We want the people to start their work from T technology L floor to when they want to bring a, a, a project. And then the number three is technology development. And technology development, which start with uh, TRL6, where you, see, you, you, you resolve all these problems. You know which material you want to use. You know that this, this material is stable, is good, or this device is stable, is good. And you make, you decide to make the prototyping. And afterward, you decide to find money from the bank or from any organism or from your, your own put, pocket to make a startup and to do industry. That's the, the, the path to do research to go from atom to device to start. Okay, now I go to digital inject print. I work on this, uh, on this subject from uh, 2011 to 2015 before I moved to Qatar, where I also start this kind of thing. And this is very easy to have an uh, inject printed device to make, a, uh, to make materials. And then what is, is very important is uh, in this is the, what we call the print head. What, uh, what I show here in this uh, figure here, and the print head is the most important part of this, of this inject print. Because the whole electronic is there, and the monitoring. I, I I'm sorry I make here Dematics is a company, but I'm not making the advertising to Dematic. But there are there are a lot of different company that are selling this uh, inject printer. But I have this kind of I work on this kind, and also in areas we we, we both I ask to to buy the same. So there are different way to 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 make a drop on a substrate by, appli by applying a, a pulse of pressure to the to a fluid ink by thermal bubbles by piezoelectric. So it's a non-contact technique. This you make drop on them, and this means a very small amount, only what you need. So this means a reduced fluid waste. So you, you reduce the environment footprint. And you can prepare a wide range of material like Polymer, ceramic, semiconducting, nanoparticle, etc. And of course, you can use algorithm, printing algorithm, and or images, and you can print any with high resolution any image or any uh, programmed uh, materials. And this is very important because in the future, when we start. The, the, the industry 4.0 in the future, that's the method what is very important for the industry 4.0. So this means producing item just in time and manufacturing on demand. Your, your customer will send you what he needs, he wish, and you will do it for him. And you say you give him his, his products. This will be 
in every corner in the in the in the smart city for example you can do this kind of job so i did some work on uh, for example copper indium 10 metal salt so we prepare precursors uh, and we work with the uh, gyps phase diagram in order to optimize which material or which composition which amount of material like we take a parameter like the amount of the concentration of copper uh, to the concentration of zinc and tin as a parameter and you see, we see how to, to make engineering of our three binary compound in order to prepare the ternary compound. It's a lot of work in the beginning, a systematic work where you have to, to find out the final stichiometry, you have to study the defect chemistry, the electric and optical property in order to have a final thickness after annealing and to, to, see, to find the photoactive material and to make the device. This kind of work we did, it. I made here some, uh, uh, some publication, you can find it in the literature from me and also a lot of people are working now on this kind of, of, of topic to make the, a specific structure like verzite, like kisterite, like carcoparite, etc. So when we start, we work with a method what the chemists now very good with called which called hot injection, and where you can you can have a precursors, and you can uh, inject one or two precursor like I show you in the here before you have for example zinc, tin sulfide zinc sulfide in the in your in your pot, and then you inject copper sulfide, or you have tin sulfide copper sulfide you inject zinc sulfide etc. It depends. And then there is a lot of things to do uh, in this process. For example, when you for, when you make electrochemistry, uh, sorry, when you make a synthesis, nanosynthesis, one one of the problem is to avoid agglomeration because you start with the small particles and then it will grow and grow and then at the end you have a uh, just what you don't need. Therefore, there are many methods with the chemist and nanoscientists chemist now to use ligand in order to stop the, the nanoparticle to grow. And olilamine is one of them. The problem, of course, with this uh, additive in order to, to avoid the, uh, the growth of big particle is that they contain a lot of carbon. And at the end, when you, uh, when you make annealing, the carbon cannot go out as volatile byproduct, but it can stay in the material and sometimes it will uh, change your electrical property in a, in a bad way. So we continue our work with uh, ink formulation by using uh, what we call ion exchange. So when we prepare a material which contains a lot of carbon, we try to use another uh, additive to exchange the iron and take out all this carbon from the uh, from the uh, from the solution in order to get a, a better uh, nanoparticle. We did this. I have here two reference from from us. You can see it, and you see the what in uh, if you take a, a nanoparticle. Uh, uh, sorry, the if you take the the, the, the a drop of your ink. You have a solvent, you have additive, you have the adhesion, the weighting, the concentration, the composition, and the viscosity. Composition and concentration are the driving of the viscosity. So all this information are in one droplet. And you have to study this droplet using, for example, a contact angle in order to see if you have, if you can weight the whole surface with your, 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 uh, your, uh, drop or you can make only drop by drop one near the other and it will it will be together etc this is a very important sign which is nanosynthesis ink formulation and drop in the uh, in, in printing so this is the challenge in this method of uh, ink printing and nano and uh, ink formulation 
I have here some some work that have, we have done, and the, the reference are on the on the on the screen. We we prepared the nanoparticles with uh, a different time. With we 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 make a, a, a water injection, and we 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 take the, the particle at different time: one minute, two minute, three minutes, in order to see the the dynamic of size growth. And we study this with X-ray diffraction. We studied this with with Raman. This is two methods which is very important to develop uh, at your university if you want to make nanosynthesis. X-ray diffraction is very important, and <coughs> Raman spectroscopy is very important. The two methods are good enough, and if you have a scanning electron micro mi micrograph uh, facility, high resolution, then you have everything to do this kind of, of study. So we we were able to 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 make a very Good nanoparticles and and to control it and to use as a as ink and we have uh, we we of course we find we don't we are not able to have a high efficiency solar cell using this hot injection nanoparticle so we moved to ink formulation using a metal salts approach and this works much better so you, you just make a metal salts. The only thing what you have to think about is the stability of the ink for a long time. We have we prepare ink which is stable for months. And there was a PhD work from one Chinese guy in my group. And uh, we are sorry, we are able to make a, uh, a process which start with ink formulation, of, for example, of coprandium gallium sulfide or zinc 10 sulfide. Then a, a first annealing, what we call preheating, that the solvent will evaporate. And the second annealing at the high temperature, reactive, then you have to add some saline or sulfur to get a, high, a big grain. And we use also sodium in order to, to improve the grain size. And we, we are able to make a very good solar cell with this. Uh, here I will I will move maybe from this and show you this result here. You see here some result where we we have made uh, copper zinc tensulfide nanoparticles. We have made copper zinc tensulfide ink and copper zinc and, and gallium, gallium sulfide. This means we use the the method of photo injection. That's what you see here in black. In, in red, we have we have used uh, the, the the same material, but uh, the uh, uh, metal precursors, and the and the third one we have used copper and gallium sulfide, and we get a very good uh, efficiency with copper and gallium sulfide with 11.3 percent using this uh, metal ink rather than nanoparticles, and for copper zinc tin sulfide. We find 6.4% uh, with uh, metal ink. However, for the uh, nanoparticle, we, only, we have only 3%. So, of course, there are a lot of problems to resolve. We, as I told you, we use uh, X-ray diffraction, Raman, and we still we find we find out the same problem. What the scientific committee find that. If you change, for example, you substitute gallium to indium, what I show you here in a picture from a National Renewable Energy Laboratory, we still have this problem to increase the, 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 the band gap and the, the photo voltage. That's our results, what we find here. The quantum efficiency I show you here. You see the, the uh, uh, scanning electron micrograph of the, of the three uh, method and uh, the publication we did, and the 11%. And this work was very successful. We published it in a very good journal, the uh, Energy Environment Science, which have an impact factor of 32. And it was a very good work done by a Chinese guy. He, he was a, one of my best students. I put his his photo here with, his, with some colleague. And I, I uh, to be honest, I never find a, a better student than, than Chinese. Sorry for that. It's like this. Okay, let's go to uh, to the end. I wanted to take some message, take away on energy planting, 
3D printing, roll-to-roll -roll processing of material like CIGS, perovskite, and silicon technology. This is the scenario what you already know. There is information. Excuse me, there are some uh, interference with other. Please. I, I, I heard some uh, background. They are talking. So I can. Yeah, Mr. Mohammed. Mr. Mohammed, please. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. so, so you have inject printing? Yes. Then inject printing multi layer. Then you have annealing and cell assembly. So the printability for large area and control techniques is one of the issue if you want to go from small device to industry and to the roll to roll. So we, we were able to make a roll to roll, but still many problems, the quality of the ink, the fast dry drying of the ink, to make the low temperature processing, because if you, you want to have a, a low cost uh, print, printer for large scale, you have to work on low temperature and to use always non-toxic uh, precursors. So the, this rule to rule is a, one of the, of the best method for the, for the future, which we, 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 we show that it's, it's, it's working very good. So you can go from uh, ink formulation from, uh, from the first tier to the end to make even uh, building integration photovoltaic. What I show you in the beginning in the photovoltaic portfolio. Another thing which is very important, I'm, I don't talk about it in this, in this, in this talk, but it's very important, is the 3D printing and additive manufacturing. So this is very important. You can take any object, a 3D motional object. You can have a software virtually to cut your, your object in, in a very, very small pieces like this. This is in a program, there are program. Then you can reproduce in real time your, your, your object. That's what we call 3D printing and additive manufacturing. And this is very, very, very important because you can use what we call here computer aid design, CAD, and it's the future for the for the industry and uh, for the industry 4.0, what I, I talked about before. So you can use also any material from Mendeleev table here to make uh, to make at the end a 3D uh, materials. Actually. You can tailor product and get your product into the customer hand with the customer specification. It's very important. It means you can uh, you have your uh, your customer. You are you have a startup or a, you are a, you have a company and you you make a, a product and you, and you have customer. You want a specific product. They tell you I want this. I want that. And then you make it, you design it, and you give it. And that's the success of this kind of 3D printing. The market is, uh, is currently about 2.2 billion industry worldwide. And the expected to trip by 2018. Now we are 2020, it maybe it's much more than $6 billion. And it is in the aerospace, in customer product, in industry machinery, in medical. Now here, for example, in Germany, more, most of the dental uh, doctors they have in their in their uh, in their uh, cabinet the uh, 3D printer to, make, to 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 prepare everything. You don't need to to send it somewhere in order to get it. So it's very important. So you just print your product in a very easy way. Now, perovskite silicon tandem device, you can also use inject printing. So you know that one of the problem actually that you, we, we are using what we call screen printing to make the contact that you see here in this figure. You can 
now make this uh, contact much thinner and you gain in the surface, active surface of your solar cell and then you can gain uh, on efficiency. You can go thinner, you can make thinner line from 35 to 40 micrometers. You cannot uh, realize with screen printing, for example. Screen printing, you can get 100 and 100 to 5 micrometers. And we are talking about large scale facility. So if in every solar cell you you lost one square centimeter, so on, on terawatt you can lose a lot, and therefore it's very important this method. So for uh, making tandem solar cell between silicon and uh, and uh, perovskite is very important. The uh, energy printing you can you can have your silicon solar cell and you can use inkjet printing to print the pair of sky. There is a company in, in England, I think in Oxford, they are doing the, this kind of, of uh, inkjet printing of pair of sky. Also, it's very important to use inkjet printing but to reduce all step in the, in the solar cell technology. And uh, there are some, uh, instead of making this lithography, for example, the, the, the classical lithography, you can make a digital lithography using inject printing and you reduce the number of step in, in, your, uh, in your process. Another topic with uh, I start long, long ago uh, is to, you, to use a, a, a ink at high temperature. For example, I give you just one example here, nickel sulfide, is a melt at around 600 degrees. And uh, if you, for example, prepare tungsten oxide and you deposit some nickel sulfide on it by drop on the mint, and you make annealing, you will transform your tungsten oxide into layered material like uh, the tungsten disulfide, but with very highly oriented material. So the, the Van der Waal plan, where the, your material will grow according to the Van der Waal plan. So the other, so your, your, uh, the surface of your material will not see the things which is a recombination centers. And this is very important. I, I made here one, one paper, but we, we we discussed in 1995, and I think also this is can be very interesting if you want to make inject printing at high temperature with change phase material, for example. The other one here is uh, perovskite. There are plenty of perovskite structure. I put here the whole the whole spectrum, and you can try different precursor A, different precursor B, so the, the, proto, the protonate, I mean, the divalent metal and the anionic species. So three kinds of ink and you can try to make the best perovskite solar cell. And even you can use machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithm to predict high performance perovskite solar cell. Uh, I think we, we I will escape this, uh, all this, but I, I will just say two words about when you, uh, or let's uh, make this here. This is uh, what I show in the beginning, that the, efficient, the theoretical efficiency, uh, uh, as, uh, the, as the, uh, you can calculate it theoretically. And uh, you can see here cadmium chloride, uh, crystalline silicon, CIGS, CZDS in the, in the lab level. You can try to reach these maximum efficiency here according to the, uh, the, 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 the figure here, what I show oh, uh, is the, the band gap. Uh, the the spectra versus uh, the band gap. Of course, 
in the if you make a small area this means the lab scale square centimeter here are the efficiency for binary compounds for cadmium telluride for uh, that's the first solar company in the state parasonic for crystalline silicon sages for solar frontier in japan CZTS, IBM Solar Frontier is a, the, 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 the uh, two companies they have made this kind of uh, solar cell for square centimeter, small area. When you go to square meter, you can see here that the efficiency is less because you, you, you're losing different, uh, by different issues, for example, the contact, uh, defect, if they are the, Defect in a small area, centimeter square will be higher for square meter, etc. If you go to the uh, to the million of square meter, this means large scale, you go the terawatt. Of course, you will find out that the efficiency will be much more lower, and also the the the, the dispersion. You can find from this uh, series of product, you find efficiency of 12 percent for cadmium telluride and the next one 15 percent so there is a a gauss curve where you have to 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 work with it that's how, how it is when you go from small area to large area so it's very important to keep in mind that when you are working on research you don't, you don't care about to make large area that you care about to understand all the process in order when you go to the industry partner to discuss with him to give him the right information in order when he go he has to do it to go from small area to the large area he know exactly in which direction he, he should work and this is the the the, uh, the magic of the scientists in the lab he know the the truth but the industry they don't know and they have to to give him this either under under uh, pi uh, intellectual pro property or under uh, license etc is very important okay so with this i will uh, stop my talk and let you discussing this i will be happy to uh, to answer to your uh, questions and to discuss with you this is just here my group and the guy has told you about this Chinese when he got his, his PhD in the Technical University Berlin. It, uh, it was my last PhD in, the, in, the, in my story or history in the Helmut Center Berlin. And I want to thank you very much for listening to this talk. And I hope you have now an idea where you have to work in new material for solar energy for batteries and also uh, uh, to uh, to know how important the process you are using for example energy printing but there are other methods that we can also discuss today thank you very much thank you very much uh, professor ahmed for your uh, presentation uh, the subject is uh, it's very, very interesting and uh, topical. Uh, yeah. uh, I wish that uh, this, uh, this thematic uh, starts uh, in our uh, university. Uh, I open the discussion. Uh, is there uh, any question? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Smail. Thank you, Mr. Zuga. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Sihmed, for this nice uh, presentation. Uh, it's really a great pleasure to hear you each time. Every time we hear you, we feel uh, science. Uh, for that, I would like to congratulate you and uh, to thank you for that. So I have a question. Um, you know you, are, you have a long experience on PV. And now we start to, to waste PV panels, you know, the first panels 20 years ago or something like that now we are try, try, uh, starting to waste such uh, panels is there any added value metals or materials that we can recover 
and reuse for another application. I know that silicon could be used for battery, for example, but is there any other element that you know as we could uh, use uh, for second time? For, for second time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, thank you for the question. It's very important because the circular economy is one of the of the uh, important uh, step in the energy transition. Also, you cannot just buy, uh, prepare something uh, through the way. So this your questions can be uh, uh, answered for many many uh, objects, not only the the, uh, the module. But for the module. You know, there are different uh, technology. If you take, for example, cadmium telluride technology. Cadmium telluride, you have uh, ITO, indium 10 oxide. On the top, you deposit uh, cadmium telluride. Then on the top, you deposit other materials. And when, if you want to make uh, recycling or uh, to see what we can do, you have to see which material is very expensive and it has an add value if you take it out from the from this process and where your, your company will gain something that's one thing and the other thing if you uh, recycle your, your product and you make it uh, out of uh, uh, that it doesn't uh, doesn't affect the environment is another point which uh, one has to see now the when you ask i suppose you ask about silicon technology because it's the one which is very old. That's uh, much mo most of the module from the la from 30 years ago now will uh, are can go to the to the garbage. But it hasn't to go to go to the garbage. It has to be recycled. And I think, uh, as you say, the silicon you can use it for uh, afterwards. You can clean. Uh, you get... first of all, there's the one regarding morocco for example where we have a lot of people they can work with hand the first is to learn that people learn with capacity being how to open a module without uh, getting uh, uh, accident or something like this and then to take every single part of the module until the only Think what is, uh, miss, uh, so they are uh, from of the module is aluminium in the in the old technology it's easy to take it out and you know aluminium you can always uh, recycle it very good take it again then when you have only the active material the pay injunction and the contact which is copper before all module from the, the old technology is copper I think you can, you have just to make a calculation how much module you will uh, recycle and you make calculation if you consider for every module you have, for example, five or 10 gram of copper, how much you can get at the end. Now, if you use uh, <coughs> other technology like CIGS, of course CIGS is very important by recycling because you have indium, you have gallium, uh, you have copper, and of course there calculate how much indium, especially indium you can get from the model. This is very important. So it depends on the technology and the, the value of the material you have in this technology. I hope I answered to your part yeah. of your, to your Okay, thank you. Any question? Yeah. Hello, how are you? Uh, uh, this is Dual from Spain again. I hope all is fine. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, thank you so much for the for the nice talk. So really, it's uh, impressive. Yeah. And uh, uh, my question is maybe I don't know if it's a question or just a uh, guess. What what we call it? Uh, what is the size of the particle which we can use? What is the minimum size or, or maximum size? Okay, uh, you you are talking about the the ink formulation, is it? Exactly. Yes. Is there any any I mean any minimum yeah. size, maximum size? Well, I, I I will tell you. I will tell you. So as I told you, there are two methods to make ink. One is nanoparticles, like uh, to make uh, nanoparticle with hot injection, then ion exchange to 
to have less carbon in your ink, and then you you, you mix your ink in alcohol, etc., to make it uh, a good viscosity to be printable. And the the the, the size of the particle is uh, is very important first because uh, why? Because you have the the head of your of your uh, of, of your inject printer, which makes sense to your question. If you if you use very big particle, your 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 uh, your ultrasonic nozzle or your your inject printer, the head will be destroyed. You cannot use it very very much, and then it's very expensive. It costs ten. It costs thousand euro one one head if you take the the one from a whole one uh, drop on demand from Holland, which is very expensive. There's another one which is less expensive, but anyway, you you will destroy your your your. Uh, therefore, I, I told you if you can make the your particle extremely small. So what does mean? Sorry. So what does mean is extremely small? small. I'm talking about ten, 10 micrometers. No, no, it's 10. too big. Ten micrometers is too too much. Less. Oh, Mm -hmm. That's why I don't want to give you a number. I want just to see you try to okay. make your method as small as possible. And the success of the other method, when you have to use metal chloride or whatever, whatever, to make the ink, which is not nanoparticle, is iron, is much more successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have some particles, some uh, some particles about uh, like uh, more of particles. Uh, which we are using since many years, using uh, looking at, uh, I mean, even we made some LED based on MOV and some sensors yeah. and stuff. And in fact, yeah. we said so about few years ago that maybe, maybe you can use uh, uh, this technology uh, and, yes. and, and to make these layers. But of course, uh, I'm asking about the, is those MOVs that they have micrometer size, 10, hundreds, even, yeah? So nanometer is it's almost it's very difficult to get. Let's tell you the the size of the particle depends of which kind of uh, uh, printer you are using. If you are using, uh, let's start with uh, spin coating. Spin coating it's, uh, it's taller, yeah. can tolerate a lot in terms no. of size. Yeah, no problem. To, huh? no problem with spin coating. Yeah, we did spin coating. We did it. it yeah. the there are many kinds of printer. There are some which are which can uh, which which you can go. A little bit higher with the with the size, but if you use drop on demand, which very precise and etc., this the the particle size is very important to be as yep. small as possible and also to work in a very very organized way. When you finish with uh, printing your 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 your, your uh, ink from nanoparticle, you have to clean the heat as uh, very fast. In order, everything is gone that you can use in the, for the next time, etc. It's very important. We we have we deal with all this problem, and uh, everyone working with the head from uh, big company can tell you this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a, just very short question, but this is not so important. No, I don't know. Uh, where are you now? Are you in Germany? Are you in Morocco? Where are you? I, I, I went to meet, 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 meet you. <laughs> My home here in Germany and funny uh, <laughs> outside. It's, it's very dark already. I yeah, see. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Other questions? Yes, um, uh, Professor Smail. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Salah, uh, Tuzari or Salah? Salah. 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 Hello. 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 Yes. Yes, Ahmed. You have given very nice talk, uh, but you forgot to show the efficiency of perovskite on CIGS. Can you tell us what's the efficiency did you get finally? Oh, uh, I okay. My myself, I don't make any tandem solar cell with uh, CIGS and uh, and perovskite. Ah, okay. For the moment, I I know that uh, actually actually the group which come there are uh, when I, I left the Hermes yeah. there is a new young lady she she bought a lot of facility with inject printing I know uh -huh. her maybe one day we can we can I can send you her her 
her, de, her detail in order to, if you want to discuss with her. And she, she made this tandem, but not, uh, I haven't done it. I haven't okay. done it. Yeah. But I know the word, I think, from IBM, you remember? Yes. The IBM, but they have made the, they, they have made spin putting, I guess. And uh -huh. they have uh, some, some, they just show that the monolithic, monolithic integration work very good. Yeah. But they don't have in mind the, the, the result. So to be honest, I, I have, and I regret, of course, this because I have, I had the facilities and normally I should go to the lab one day to take a CIGS and, uh, to make a sky Now I regret it a little bit. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Salah. Tuzani? Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Ismail. Uh, please, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Nawi, for this nice uh, talk and conference. I, I like so much your uh, beginning with uh, the photosynthesis and uh, discussing with the thermodynamics and cinetics. And I love a lot uh, your approach about from university to, to the industry. What uh, kind of project uh, you can share with us? You get it from, uh, you, it start from in university and uh, it, uh, it was in the market, for example. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I think there are many, many projects which is uh, which start with the university and finish with the, with the, the, the final product in the startup, et cetera. In if you if I take the example here in Germany, all product which you find now in the industry start from the lab. If you take CIGS, for example, CIGS starts in, in for example, in uh, it's very good to you ask this question because it will bring us to another other question which has to, to do with economy and uh, if you take CIGS, that's copper and young gallium sulfide selenide or you take just copper and sulfide we it was a, the one one of the big institute i think if you take uh, 2000 the, the year 2000 when uh, or even a little bit more 1995 we started in the Helmut center at the time it's called han meitner institute when uh, i made my habilitation we start to work on, on this uh, CIGS. And there is a lady, she come from Bell Telephone to make her PhD in our lab. And she start to work just from this. She makes solar cell with copper and aluminum gallium sulfide just as electrode in contact with electrolyte, iodine electrolyte. And she, she show a very high efficiency with a photoelectrochemical solar cell. And from this, People understand also in NRL, National Laboratory, that the material is very important. Of course, she did her PhD and she has gone to California and she made her, her company there. And they know her, she, her name is Shalini, you remember her name. And she wrote a very good paper in Nature at the time. Then the lab got a lot of money and they start to work on, uh, on copernicum sulfide first. And afterward, this work became a company called Sulfur Cell in Berlin, a big company. What is the problem? The problem is, is not 10 film are not good, etc. The problem is after 2000, the Chinese, China, or the, the, the state of China, they give a lot of money to the industry in China with a very small uh, uh, benefit in order to develop the, the solar in China. And they opt for uh, silicon. And there are a lot of companies in the buy the technology of Germany on silicon, Siemens uh, process for to make Ingo, etc. And after a few years, China became the leader of producing ingo of silicon, wafering silicon, 
and we make an economy of scale which makes silicon very cheap which make uh, of course uh, nonsense to work with uh, with uh, 10 films CIGS and uh, copper and sulfide because when we people start to work with, uh, with 10 films they work with 10 films because it is since uh, we need only one micrometer of 10 film instead of 100 to 200 micrometer of silicon we will have a cheap technology but what's happened chinese with the doping of their of their industry they uh, they are able to make silicon very cheap and dollar per watt for 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 the for the silicon and therefore all companies in in germany they make ban what we call in german i don't know the name in english uh, bank corrupt this means that they they they, they uh, on a pizza we, we call this in, in french i think fight the fight they cannot continue anymore and they, they stop bank group bank yeah. uh, thank you yeah this that's what i, I mean so the problem i think good to, to ask because it's it's not just uh, to make a company it is important etc is also you, you are in a, a situation where there is a risk you can make a, a, in the in the in the uh, your fundamental research you go further with resources to the application you, you negotiate with the industry to make a product and it can happen that this product can have a problem like what's happened with the uh, with the uh, with copernicum sulfide and crgs of course or when i ask people now they say to me one day it will come out because maybe silicon will be will become uh, that uh, the 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 offer is, is smaller with the time and then we will have to go back to the to the to the uh, to the tent so one of the of the examples is uh, yes it starts in the lab and then it's finished by uh, a big big companies for example take my now uh, the pair of skype and they, they think uh, professor nasruddin if he's there he, he knows this that it's starting the lab the industry will not go in the in the organic chemistry lab and make a precursor and study which precursor is stable etc they are waiting that the lab in the university make this work and come to them and say to them look i made the ink which is extremely stable we made a very small solar cell we make a stability test of the solar cell for now more than one month it's working very good the damp heat test is working very good and then the end you will take your product and make it and make it further to make a module etc etc so every research at the university is important but i have to tell you this i have to I, we have the politics have to understand this take another example for example which has not to do with the solar that has to do with the vaccine actually two guys two cu one couple is from from turkey they have a small uh, they have idea they come to germany they, they grow up there and they work on biology and now they are the the most one well, they will be the most rich people because they they are able they think about to make a vaccine based on uh, uh, rin this means this this uh, 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 with, uh, it's it's one part of the adn not the classical not the classical vaccine but uh, uh, another kind of vaccine another uh, innovative idea and now they, they have an alliance with the big big company in the united states I think uh, the, the company is, is Pfizer or something like this, and uh, that's uh, th that's the point. The point is, researcher, scientist at the university, they can do something with nobody is able to do, but they have to have the structure, and they have also to be to love 
research because you cannot do research if you don't like it and that's one of the problem and of course you will not love to do research if uh, you see that your, com your, your country doesn't give you any credit to do it and you will go okay if you don't want me to do it, then i'm not going to do it. so research fundamental research is extremely important for the development of the country and the portfolio that choose what you want to do is very important. Now, if you go to industry, you can, the, a professor at the, uh, the, the university, there are some professors that are able to do some research, to do some uh, patents, some license, to go to do their own startup, but not all of them, they can do this. It's not possible. And you go to Silicon Valley, for example, United States, hundreds of startup finish in the garbage not all startup will, will have a success but if in a country you have a thousand of startup and three of them are working that's very good that's what, what the, the the people have to, to understand so now actually for example i discussed this yesterday with the national dean light emitting diode with perovskite for example to make, to take inject printing, ink formulation of perovskite, and not to make solar cell, but to make light emitting diode. This is a very good uh, way, a very good market in the future, for example. That's one, 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 one topic which has to be done normally. Because it's, it's very easy to do, and if they are stable, it will be good to make light emitting diode product uh, the made in morocco so i hope uh, there are many many subjects that we can discuss uh, in the, in medicine for example sensors sensors for medicine are very important one uh, you have their uh, sadun the batteries is very important extremely important there are a lot a lot of things which is not resolved in terms of uh, batteries so the, the, the problem is that people work together to make alliance between universities. Not every one is doing his, his small business in somewhere and nobody knows what he's doing. People, they have to make alliance for research. That's, I, I hope it will work with different universities involved in the same project. And everybody brings something. So I hope I, I give you some some way of uh, understanding this topic. Okay, I'm I'm ready. Okay. Any question? Mr. Oh, th uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Professor Ahmed uh, for this uh, very interesting conference. Uh, the question from uh, Professor Dr. Azawi from the Lahyun. Uh, is it possible to use a Moroccan phosphate uh, among the, uh, this kind of materials? So I think phosphate are you already used, and I think uh, Professor Sadun is working on this topic for for at least for batteries. And maybe he can answer what is what is possible to do for batteries and what is possible to do for other things. I don't have any idea about what uh, the OCP, which is, which is the the the, uh, the company they have uh, to deal with phosphate what they propose and what, what they want to do. But in terms of batteries, I think the uh, Professor Sadun is working on it and maybe you can give him the yeah. floor, he did something. Yeah, this is a good invitation for my talk for Saturday. I will talk on some phosphate. So welcome for Saturday, we'll have some, okay. some feedbacks. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, other question? Okay. 
the so, before, I, before I leave, before I leave, okay. it's very important. Okay. Do you hear me? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's very important to say is, uh, some some word. I think uh, I I work with uh, Professor Hamuti and his colleague. I forget him the name. I'm very sorry, but uh, his name I think I can see it here in my. Shafali. Yes. Yes. So uh, I think I I what I what I, what I learned from Hamuti and his friend, he's also a professor, and I think he's going to, make, to finish his habilitation, as uh, he told me yesterday, that professor of the university in Morocco, or the still loving their job as professor and as scientist, researcher, have a very good character. They, are, they love the country and love what they are doing. And I hope that uh, the Moroccan government are dealing with the with research, with the education, capacity building, they, they give to the university uh, more credit, more money, more condition for yeah. the professor and for the Because without this, without this, we have no future in Morocco. And I, I, I saw how people are very good, how they, they want to do something, they work hard. The, this, uh, I saw a colleague from Hamuti, he wake up in the morning at 6 o'clock and he work until uh, midnight. I don't think that they, you find a minister in Morocco is doing this. So anyway, I think the, the, I, I don't want to go to the politics because when I go to the political, I always became a little bit nervous. Therefore, I want just to say is congratulations to the, to the Hamuti, his colleague and all professor involved in this uh, conference. This conference has a very important thing. One, it starts from fundamental issues, which, and fundamental issues are very important in chemistry, in physics, material science and go further to the application. And such conference has to have a lot of credit, a lot of support from the government in, in the future. And they hope it, it can happen. Because if we don't do this, this means we haven't understand what's going on in this planet. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you for, for your advice. In the end of this interesting lecture, I would like uh, to thank uh, again Mr. Uh, Mr. Belkhir uh, Hamouti and uh, his team. Uh, I thank uh, everyone for your uh, following and uh, participation uh, participating in this uh, session. Thank you for your relevant uh, comments and uh, questions. Uh, Okay, thank you very much uh, for your uh, attention and, uh, and goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Th thank you very much. Merci. Shukran. سي بالخير راه ما تسمعوكش سي بالخير سي بالخير ما رحناش نسمعوك تي اكتيف طون طون ميكرو فوالا ثانك يو ثانك يو سو ماتش فور اول وي شال كونتينيو اور كونفرنس باي اورال كوميونيكيشنز ان ان 1 مينيت ميرسي بوكو موتشا غرابيا شكرا جزيلا
السلام عليكم I think vision is over. <laughs> 